All right. Well, it's been a while, but we finally managed to get back out on the water. Which way are we drifting? Are we drifting at all? Boy, it's pretty calm. I actually like to have a little bit of a drift when I'm chasing flathead and the lack of any real movement at all might make things a little bit harder. Probably going that way. Now this is just my lazy man rig. You've probably seen it before in a few of my videos. I've just got a little uh, one ounce snapper weight. I've got a looper drop coming off with a little bait keeper hook. And then I've got just a little jiggle worm on the end. Basically, it's, it's fishing like you'd fish with a squid strip or any other bait, except for it's a, a plastic lure instead. And I find it extremely effective on both flathead and pinky snapper. Let me get this leaning out a bit more. There we go. I've just changed the uh, angle of that rod holder because by doing that, when I move in the boat, that rod tip is actually going to move a greater distance. It's just a matter of leverage. If it's putting straight up, it's going like this. If it's pushing more out, it's going like that. So that's going to give it a little bit more action. Looks like we are drifting this way. Not sure if the sleeper rods are going to do a whole lot today because of the lack of movement, but I'll get a couple out just in case. They uh, generally work better if you have a bit of burly in the water, if we don't have any movement. When the boat is drifting, you will eventually drift over fish and they'll pick them up that way. But when you have very little movement, I think it's better off to have a bit of burly in the water and that can help bring them to you. And then when the fish get there, they see the plastic and that's when they pick it up. I've got these rods pre-rigged. They've been this way for, oh, I don't know, probably six months. I think they've got the same lures on them as well. I don't think I've changed them in ages. I do sometimes take the weights off though because it stops them from getting tangled when I've got all the rods sitting together. And since we're chasing flathead, I'm going to change over to my most preferred flathead color which is the Jiggle Worm in Watermelon. Over the past six months, I've caught the vast majority of my flathead on this, this exact setup. Are you kidding? First cast. <laughs> oh, you gotta love that. Doesn't feel like it's all that big. <laughs> it is cold though, so you never know, but. Uh, it's not huge, whatever. Oh, it's putting up a little fight now. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's probably a law. It's probably borderline. Oh, no, it's probably a legal size flathead. Certainly not huge by any means, but oh, it's a yeah. good confidence builder when you get a fish first cast. Jeez, pretty excited. The cold water, usually they're totally shut down, but right, let's see what size is he. He's 31. I'm going to throw him in the cooler with some water, but if we get some bigger fish, I'll probably drop him back because that's not, it's not really a very big fish. It's not, not a heap of meat on a fish this size, but sometimes a couple small fish like this can make up enough for a meal, which is good. Yeah, that's not really the size we want. You really, mid thirties to mid forties is, really the size we want but always happy with the first cast fish that's <laughs> always a good side
Now the water temperature is only 11.8 degrees Celsius. That's still, that's pretty cold. It's probably typical this time of year, but it's generally means the, the fish are pretty shut down at those temperatures. Oh boy, gotta pay attention, Mark. <laughs> I'm sure you guys saw that well before I did. Oh, that's funny. I don't know how long that was going. You'll have to tell me. Oh, it's another little flathead. <laughs> oh, he's not that small. He's a chunky one too. Oh yeah, he, he's been eating well. It's 31. A few of those will make a meal. So once again, I'll keep him. But if we get some stuff that's mid thirties, I'll end up putting, uh, putting these guys back. Well, I'd say that was a super disappointing day on the water, but after getting to see those seals and the dolphins and getting the drone up, it was pretty cool. I mean, we only got two fish. Fortunately, I do have a couple fish in the freezer. Last time I came out for a catch and cook, I caught a little bit more than I needed. And as we were cooking them, I realized that I wasn't gonna need that many. So I froze those and I'm gonna add the couple fish that I got today to those and we'll get home and do the catch and cook for the family. We'll see you there. All right, the boat is clean, the fish is clean, and we are ready to start our cooking. And one of my favorite things about this recipe is it is a real family favorite. Like uh, even kids who don't normally eat fish, I find will eat this. And it's also super, super simple. So after you've been out fishing all day and you've cleaned the boat, washed the boat and cooked the, cleaned the fish, and you're totally shot, there's only a couple simple steps to making this recipe and that makes it sort of one of my favorites for the family. Now, all we need to do, we've got a couple bowls here. We've got one bowl. In that bowl, we're gonna add three quarter cups of breadcrumbs. And we're gonna add one quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese. And that's gonna be our breading for the fish. Just grab a fork. So to mix that up, make sure it's mixed all the way through and you've got a little bit of breadcrumbs and a little bit of cheese and just about all of it. Then we're gonna take one quarter cup of natural yogurt. That's what's gonna help the breadcrumbs stick to our breading. And I've got a pan here, which I've already put on the heat and I've just splashed a little olive oil in the bottom just enough to sort of lubricate the whole thing. We're not actually sort of deep frying. We're just keeping it from sticking to the bottom of the pan. And I put it on sort of a medium high heat. So we'll test a little piece to start with. Just dip it in the yogurt there. Then in the breadcrumbs. Make sure you get that fully covered. And then into the pan. I like to do one small piece in the beginning just to get an idea that the heat is okay. That way I don't put a whole bunch of fish in and end up burning it or put a whole bunch of fish in and it just gets all soaked in oil and it's not cooking or it's uh, cooking too slowly. So we'll just do this. A little test. And depending on how thick the fish is, you're probably looking, I don't know, three minutes per side. Uh, a little bit less if it's thinner, a little bit more if it's thicker. And that's looking pretty good. I think I've got the temperature pretty close to right. One thing I do like to do is if I've got some uh, pieces that are a little bit bigger and pieces that are a little bit smaller, I like to try to cook the smaller pieces together and then the bigger pieces together. That way I can sort of check the, the smaller pieces and once I know one is pretty well cooked, the rest are cooked and then I put the bigger ones in, which will have to be in for a little bit longer, but sort of it makes it a bit easier with the timing if you don't have like a big piece and a small piece in the pan at the same time. Mm, that's good. Mm, mm, mm. Oh 
Oh yeah. All right, I'm happy with that. I think I've got the temperature about right. So I'll put my first batch of small fish pieces in. The other thing, you don't wanna to put too many in the pan at the same time. If you really crowd the pan, it's not an issue as far as, you know, having too much fish in as far as the space goes. It's, it's more of an issue of cooling the pan down. If you put a lot of big pieces of fish in there, it can actually reduce the temperature of the pan and it can cause problems with the cooking of the fish. This is a good sized pan and these pieces are pretty small, so I'll probably put, put four in. Make sure that's fully coated. One of my other little tricks that I do to sort of make it easy on myself when I get back is I just cook the fish here and then I send somebody out to the fish and chip shops just to get a big chips for the family. It's, you know, what a maximum chips is like $6. It's all those chips and when you compare that to the hassle of actually cooking your own chips, I find it's, uh, yeah, much easier to do it that way. Just get that and then we have the beautiful fresh fish here. If you're interested in seeing any of my other Catch and Cook videos, I'll put a playlist right here. So you can hop over there, and I'll see you there. Getting fish. Okay, can you try it? It's yummy. <laughs>